But Danya, he looks focused. And I know he has been. So Danya, of course, good friend as the games start. Uh, but he has really been dedicated to this event, going to sleep earlier. Danny, you should be proud. Oh, my gosh. Don't, if that's all I needed to do to get Danya to go to bed earlier, we should hold a bullet event every week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, jokes aside, anyone who follows Chess Commentary knows that Danya... Danya's done it. You know, he's had his late nights knowing he needed to wake up at the at 6 a.m. the next day for commentary. So, um, but we love him and he's been getting his rest. Look at him. He looks like he showered. He's fresh. Now he's leaned in and uh, forgets that he's he's a commentator and now he's just a player. Doesn't care how he looks on camera right now. Yeah, and he shouldn't. I mean, I, he should care about how his position looks because I see holes in White's position and Magnus hops yep. his knight to C4. All these light squares under Magnus's control and the clock, a five second lead. Currently for Magnus, I think he's got great chance to take game one with black. Yeah, and this move A5 is is super nice. Obviously already focused on opening the A file, prying down the A3 pawn. I know it's bullet, but positional chess still matters. Oh my gosh, an E3 crumbling, the king behind it. Danya is uh, feeling the hurt here in the first game. Yeah, Bishop takes d4. Black is going up at minimum in exchange. Uh, it's a good effort there. Oh, there's queen d4. Please take my queen. Oh no, my queen. Yeah. You take there. There was a back rank mate on e8. Nice little trap. Oh, no, my queen. And uh, uh, Danya is going to try for every trick in the book, in the books, even when he's down against Magnus today. So oh. plenty more where that came from. Wow. So okay. Magnus allowed rook d7 because he had spotted rook a1 check. Now Magnus up a full rook into this endgame and has plenty of time to convert the win. Yeah. Time is critical here. Any game we're evaluating a Magnus Carlsen advantage, you have to look at the clock before you uh, chalk it up to the books. Right there, Magnus Carlsen does take the first game with Black. And he's ready. He's back home, feeling a little more comfy, maybe. And uh, here we go. And this looks like a Karakon to me, but it started with D4 Knight of 6. So it's, it was a Jabawa London turned into a sort of Karakon, turned into whatever this is. And I feel like Danya, uh, he is going to be down on the clock in the early stage of the game. Magnus is the better prepared player between the two. Something Hikaru said, that Danya has been changing his openings against Naka and maybe against some of the other top players. And that could actually be detrimental rather than helpful yeah. because you, you spend time. But actually, look at this tactic from look Danya. Trap. The F2 pawn. Magnus missed that. That's a super nice trick. The F2 pawn was hanging. I think that's a great point, though. Overall, when you're not playing positions that you're comfortable with, where the plans are almost subconscious, it can really hurt you in bullet when you really need to play quickly on the clock. So if Danya has to change his openings against top players, not a great sign. Oh, and look at that. He blundered his knight. Oh, man, he had such a good position. Oh, that's super unfortunate. That move rook d1 by Magnus took away a checking square, and now... Danya resigns because he's losing his rook on d7 to follow. So that must be frustrating. You steal a pawn with a nice tactic, and then a few moves later, you blunder a piece in the center. We talk about that a lot. I know it's hard to get instructive moments in bullet, but you can't take for granted that a tactic may not have worked the move before, Robert. Your opponent does something that makes it work, and you are you were borderline pre-moving, and so you blundered. Magnus really heads up play there to take away that queen d4 check and actually renew the threat of f3, and he wins the game. Yeah, and now we get into this third game here. Magnus with the black pieces trying to stop checkmate. He does, but his pawn structure is shattered. Great position, I would say, for Danya. He's also keeping steady on the clock. But now, Magnus, will he show that endgame technique that's made him the highest rated player in history? And you called it, though, out of the gates. I, I said Danya needs to make sure he doesn't fall behind. You specifically said that a 3-0 deficit would be really, really problematic. And right now, Danya is staring down the barrel of that gun and look at that though he's rising to the occasion he's one upon now two he's got three passers good <laughs> stuff here from Danya to make sure he doesn't fall behind three games do you see that smile Danya smiled yes. and took a drink right that was actually very adorable <laughs> can we flip and ship that please that's what that's the feeling you know the feeling of beating a world champion that video we did of Artemiev that's the feeling of beating a world champion in bullet right there big smile from Danya Naroditsky yeah, I'd love to see that. Magnus does not like to see that because you do not want to give Danya that kind of confidence. When Danya's in that flow state where he's just moving, I mean, his intuition is superb. And so Magnus knows that. He respects that. And here with the white pieces, Magnus is taking all the space in the position. But when you push pawns forward, you leave them vulnerable in the future. So watch out for this E4 pawn in particular and also this B4 pawn. Yeah, the B4 pawn is... Look at that. Danya finds a trick because if you took... You would have lost the knight on f3 due, due to the, and look at that now he wins the exchange donya rolling if he evens up this match that's the confident donya we called that would be capable of winning today he's got to get out to a good start early and i love how he's playing 
But did you see that by Magnus? Trading queens went down material because if the rook slides up, then you lose the rook to the other bishop. That was actually sick from Magnus. The, the ability to spot all that in the blink of an eye. Oh, but look at Donya. Right back at it with the trick himself with that G5 move that saved mm -hmm. the exchange. That was nasty. I, I don't know that he's going to win, but look, he might be oh. on, on route. Is there a mating net here? There has to be. Where is it? I was thinking rook takes F6, but I don't think that worked just yet. But uh oh Yeah. Uh, oh, bishop, he might bishop have wondered at the... Oh, bishop, bishop F3 and then rook G6 and then bishop oh back. Oh, my gosh. What is happening here? This looks very I close. I have no idea. E6, the pawn pushes, and then is there H5? E6 check and... Oh, my gosh, and it's falling apart. Wait, rook G6, rook G6! Woo! Rook G6, check coming. coming! See it coming! Oh, rook takes F6. Oh, but he took the wrong piece! And he gets... Why did he, he take G5? He's no. gonna get baited back here. Oh, my God, rook takes F6 was good, not rook G5. Oh, and Donya just making a few moves, resigns, and look at the smile on his face. He's like, I cannot believe that I just out-calculated Magnus Carlsen and then still made a mistake and lost. That is what the Bullet Chess Championship is made of right there, games like that. Of course, we see the uh, the real-time engine analysis showing there were obviously a number of blunders and miswins there, but it doesn't matter. It's entertaining chess, and Donya misses his opportunity to level the score. Okay, but he goes right back into the game, and he's playing quickly, and he's got a French-like structure, and it's the best French I've ever seen. Black doesn't have a light score bishop. Uh, the pawn structure is shattered on the queen side for white, but black castles into the pressure. Da Danny, we usually say the side with a safer king is usually the side with the advantage in bullet. I don't think yep. black's king is particularly safe. Black's king is not safe. Danya is... Uh... Very easy plans here, I think, to play on the queen side. The knight's popping into d6, just as you highlight. Look at that move, d4. This is an easy position for white to play, which is key and bullet. Swing the rook back over. Yep, he does it. I like where Danya's going here. Got to keep this thing close. Very instructive from Danya. His rook was on b1, pressuring the, the black king. And he just says, let me go over to the king side. And uh-oh, he did just drop two pawns in a row, one of them with oh, check. Oh. The h-pawn yeah. may be dangerous, Danny? Yeah, the h pawn is super dangerous. The king is also in an awkward spot there. You're, oh, he was threatening rook g6 and rook h6? Mm-hmm. Crazy Stop. that the engine can say this is an equal position. That's so unfair to chess. <laughs> it, <laughs> it is, but look at the clock. As you said, who cares what your accuracy is? Look at the time. I think yep. that Danya yep. should try to flag Magnus here. 100% agreed. That you can't let games like this go by. You got to flag him, especially when there's a knight on the board, right? So many tricks possible, like forks. In fact, that's a huge heads-up play by Magnus to get the Knights off the board. Dirty flag him. It's Rook against Rook and Pawn. Who cares? Do not repeat moves. Give checks. And if you're Magnus, you probably just do not push the Pawn. That way you get a 50-move rule. Yep. Yep. Yeah, at this point, the writing is on the wall that you're not going to have enough time to win if you're Magnus, so don't push the Pawn and take the draw. No draw. This Hope isn't for searching server. for Bobby Fischer. That's a win for Daniel Narditsky. <laughs> he raises his hand apologetically. Danya is such a sweetheart. For those who don't know, the level of respect Danya has for just the, the sanctity of the game of chess. As someone who flags people a lot, 28% of his victories, you should just know, Danya feels bad about every single dirty flag he's ever done, genuinely. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was like in tennis, when you hit a really hard shot and then it hits the net and then gently rolls over and you're like, sorry yeah. about that. Like, you got the point sorry the way that. you needed to. Uh, there was nothing unethical about it. So Danya, he is now only down by one point. His position looks really bad from the black side. And by the way, we saw that chat voted and 22% of you believe in Danya. The 70, other 78% think Magnus is going to win. Yeah. I, I don't think that's a huge surprise. Magnus wins a lot of votes. Uh, when people ask who's going to win a match. Look at this. There's a trick here on the board. White's D7 pawn, I guess, is, is going to rule the day here in the end. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. D7 and... That pawn will push. Don't... Look at that by Magnus. Do not take the bishop because the king would have rushed over to E7 to win the pawn. So bishop E3, a stellar retreat, and here comes the bishop to C7, and that should be it. Yeah, oh. Nice heads up defense, though. Getting the all oh, but Magnus, he'll have none of it. You will not slow down the pawn. A little head bob, that T Swift, you know, hitting it, oh. hitting it. Let's just hope it's not Carly Ray Jepsen. Whoa, nothing, nothing wrong with Carly Ray. Yeah, wait, what? What are you gonna? I just what? What just happened there? Why are you? Why I said that? Yeah, why are you I going against Carly Ray Jepsen? Why don't we talk about Sean Mendes <laughs> for a second? Whoa, ninety six. Oh that pawn was pinned. Don't do that. Whoa, ninety six check. <laughs> he blundered it. 
And Don just, Don just smiles, but Magnus laughing a little bit. Oh, wait, it's not over. No. I thought it was just over. He this is a very complicated game where Black's up in exchange. And look at that awareness from Magnus. Queen h5 gets those queens yeah. off the board. Black apparently isn't even better, but Black does have two rooks to white's one. Yeah, this is completely turned around. For a game that started with a knight d6 check, borderline smothered mate, Magnus gets the queens off the board, heads up play, which makes his king safe. And now he should be winning in this endgame. But I'm looking at the clocks, and anytime I see Magnus within a couple seconds of Danya, I'm actually worried yeah. for Magnus because Danya is faster in these time scrambles. There's plenty of time left, too much extra material for Black for the moment, but Danya is smart to play this yeah. out. Totally agreed. Especially if you're not down, you know, at this point, there's still 19 minutes left in the match. You're not in a position where you Ooh. need a new game to get a... Oh, and he, he finds a fork just like that. It's turning back around. Second knight d6 of the game, and that's going in Danya's way. Still up upon is Magnus Carlsen, and he's up a couple seconds. But I'm telling you, Magnus would want to be up four seconds into time scrambles because Danya is faster. Yep. You can already sort of smell the dirty flag coming here. <laughs> you can, like, you can smell it. And, and Don Magnus can feel it, too. Look at the level of pre-moving that he's engaged here. Hoping for a draw. Oh, no huh? draw. Magnus played on. No, and actually, he wants more. Magnus is slightly ahead of the clock, but Donna's king gets back in time. It's in the box, so the black king will eat d3. Uh, it's going to be a draw now anyway. Okay. Whew, Danny. But Donny was lost, uh, objectively, and he fought back because he knows when to resign and when to play on. And I was actually surprised by Magnus's decision to keep pushing there. I think that if he does that too many times... You might regret it, because especially when you have a two-game lead, I would be okay with a draw rather than take my chances in a dirty flag competition with Danya. I don't want to be in a dirty flag competition with that guy, right? And so I'm a little I'm a little surprised by that risk that risk there that Magnus took. Yeah, because yesterday, Hikaru against Ali Reza, Hikaru won Bishop and Rook Pawn, a draw, because it was the wrong colored Bishop for the corner. A couple of times, he just flagged Ali Reza, the same exact endgame. We almost saw, for the second time in this match, Rook against Rook and a couple Pawns, to a win in time trouble. Right now, we're seeing Danya try to use the queen side to his advantage. He's down in exchange. Not the first time today we've seen that. But he's gobbling up queen side pawns, and that's a passer. Yep. Yeah, this is, I mean, objectively a very balanced position. In bullet, it's actually hard to choose which side is easier to play. The bishops in the pass pawn feel good, but long term, that knight will be tricky in the time scramble. But look at that move. Bishop wow. A2. He's nice saying your, move. your rook's useless. And Bishop H6? Bishop C1? How is white going to defend this? You have to go knight A3 at the end of it? Oh! Magnus. Magnus. I don't know what he anticipated there. Unclear. But Danya is in charge. And look at the clock, by the way. Not only is Danya yep. probably better with the two bishops versus the rook, he is well ahead on time. And as long as he doesn't blunder a piece, he should be able to take this yep. game. Agreed. Yeah, this is uh, Danya's game to win. Look at the time advantage just increasing for Naroditsky here. This is the position Magnus is afraid of. Doesn't want to be in these spots. Danya's going to, I think, bring this thing within a game here. And if I'm Danya, I don't crazy happening. know how many moves have been made, but I might throw in G4 at the moment, trying to catch... Oh, yeah, there, yeah, the game of a pawn. Sure. So okay, losing a pawn go. is actually a good thing because there's no 50 move rolling. Oh, but that's not good. Oh, that's not a good thing, but Magnus only has two seconds. Not gonna... Oh, he's going to get everything off the board. Oh, he had a chance. Take the bishop. He had a chance. Oh, wow. Wow, what a save by Magnus there. And that is unfortunate for Danya because that was a rare chance. To get a victory, he didn't take it. Yeah, that was a save by Magnus. So he's proving, you guys may call me out and say, I can't handle myself in the scrambles. He said, nope, this one I have under control. But honestly, that was Danya blundering a piece. He was trying to pre-move uh, the way through. And now with the white yep. pieces, though. Look at this for Danya. Apparently, it's just winning for white. Danya's, Danya's keeping with it here. And, the, uh, you know, not only is he... Better in these, it, well, he's consistently up on time. Magnus did just hold his own in that scramble. Oh. But Danya's been playing a high level of chess here. Oh. Bishop a6, what a tricky move. He blundered. Look at this. The rook is under attack. If you there's f5. Yeah, and if you Wait, defend the rook, then you lose the knight at the end. So I think, what is, the, how is this equal? Is it some sort of check in queen h4 guarding the rook? Oh. No, at the end there's you, a You know what it is, Danny? It's rook takes a8 and knight d7, knight of fate. And then the king can't escape. Oh so my he... god, with a perpetual. But that, that's impossible to find. 
I don't think Magnus sees it, and I definitely think Donya doesn't see it because he's clearly frustrated. He actually just resigned. Oh my gosh. That's one of those where the engine is just so unfair for us, but it is actually a really cool thing because the instructive moment of this this perpetual on night of eight, we never would have spotted no. if not for the computer saying the position was level. I mean, we sat there clueless for a little bit. and like, How is this equal? And I'm like, okay, you're telling me it's equal. Any queen move seems to lose a piece. So let's go for that. And that is ridiculous. You can't expect to find that even in a blitz game and bullet, no shot. So Danya with the black pieces, he just stole a pawn. He's actually playing quite well in this match. Read. Yeah, here he goes. He's up a pawn. And uh, up on the clock, significantly, by the way. Yeah. So this is an opportunity to stay with it, get it back within a couple games after that after that crazy loss. And but Magnus is also, you know, he's playing, he's pulling a Danya too. Even when he's losing, he's making it hard. He's dragging it out. And if he does have a lead, it's in his it's in his best interest to get as much time off the clock as possible. Only thirteen minutes remain right now. Whoa, oh, we have a blunder. That was nice. going to get it with the fist pump. Let's yeah. go. That was a nice game from start to finish as Donya secures his fourth point in the match. It's now six to four, and we have to remember that it's win by two. So as long as Donya can cut this to a one point deficit, even if time elapses, he's still in this. Yeah. All right, what do we got now? We've got a, a simple, boring-looking symmetrical position, but Danya on the prowl. <laughs> I like the way you described it, you know. Yeah, <laughs> they just trade off all the pieces. Only e-file is open. This looks like it should be draw-ish, but I'm looking at the clock. I think Danya, yeah. perfectly happy with equal positions where there are pieces left on the board and he can try to outplay Magnus. Although with that move, is he saying, I'm okay with the draw? Yeah, I wonder. It's... Probably true that he's okay with a draw on this one, but I don't know that Magnus will take that. We know that he Magnus did. is super tricky. We saw him... Okay, he does take a draw. <laughs> I'm going to say, we saw him win two night endgames against his buddy Jordan Von Furist at the uh, Champions Chess Tour last week. Of course, a little bit of a different format in a, in a rapid setting than a bullet setting, but uh, but okay. And I wonder if Danya, if he really needs to win that game, let's say there was the last game of the match, I mean, he would have played that out, and maybe he could have yeah. posed some problems because he is that fast. And credit to Magnus, because Magnus, he's... Improved his game. I think the Magnus we're seeing now is better than we've seen in the last few days. Uh, he is leveling up, as Alariza said he had to. Yeah, agreed. He's playing uh, playing better. Again, more focused. Maybe a little more comfy in his home setting than he was on the road. Whether it's enough to get by Danya, Ali Reza, and Hikaru Nakamura, okay, that's uh, that's going to be quite the tale if Magnus can complete a comeback and ultimately win today. But we'll we'll deal with that later. Right now, we've got a rook end game with queens on the board. Danya, again, holding his own. But Magnus up on the clock here. Yeah, he is up a few seconds. He gets his queen in. Oh, but speaking of queen in, that could be scary for the king. And Magnus, he offers a queen to an A3, B6, both under attack because of the, the rook placement for white. So, whoa, is Danya going for more with that B5 move? I think he is, and I think he should. The past A pawn, you know, whether objectively black's better or not, Poses some problems practically for White. Look at this. He wants to break up. He loses the best A-pawn, right, as I say it. And Magnus has turned it around. Danya on the defensive. Oh. Can't take because uh -oh. of rook A7. Wait. You can't, you can't take, take rook A7? Yeah. Wins the that, that's a problem. So that means now that... There's... Yeah. Magnus up too much time, Danny. Yeah. He's going to play rook B8 and then sack the queen on C7. Oh, but watch out for the draw. Oh. Oh. What? Oh. What? Yeah. Why did it... Go very far down there. Not sure. Uh, a second queen, but there's a mate threat on G2. Okay, not anymore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was it was there for we've, a split We've second. seen games already where someone's queen didn't help them stop mate earlier in the Bullet Chess Championship this week. So not to be not to be there for Danya. Magnus increases his lead. I mean, really nicely done there by Magnus, converting that advantage. He stole the A3 pawn and never looked back. And here, Danya's playing one of his pet lines. It's this Jabawa London system where, look at these knights. These knights are on dark squares. That's a bishop on a light square. I'll put the knights in green, but they are outclassing that light square bishop, which is staring to thin air. Yeah. So pretty. Knights on dark squares. Ooh, queen C8. Oh, queen C8. Apparently not great. Hey, that rhymed. <laughs> we're, now we're rolling. What is going on here? Look at it, this. Max just over the attack, Danya. Let's go. 
Magnus sacked his rook, and then it sacked a pawn in the center. This is getting very confusing, but it looks like Magnus has gone astray. It looks like he's gone astray, but I don't, I don't, with every Ooh. move, the evaluation seems to change. And then there was potential knight f2, so the queens come off the board. It's so From a confusing. practical perspective, I don't know who is easier to play, though, in bullet here. That d pawn is so dangerous. And you have to sacrifice for it. So he's going to give a check. Oh, he's making the draw that he could have oh. had in, in the other game. But I wonder. But is there yeah. a mating net? Is there? Not. Ah, there's no nothing more than a draw. Yeah, this pawn. Too strong. Ah. And. Danya, he spent a bit of time there calculating, but he needs all the time that he, he has left. making sure. But he needs the time. That's the thing. You want to win no, games. No, you're right. I, I, it's tough. Yeah. No, I, I don't disagree that you got to make those decisions as fast as you can. But I think Danya just wanted to make sure he wasn't missing, right? Right. We have the luxury of the Ebel bar saying it's a draw. He didn't want to walk away from, from a mating net. Um. All right. Vezhnikov structure with G3. Magnus knows these positions well, and now this move G4. Wow. And Ooh, this queen lands in the center, but Rook hits it. And is there an attack? This G4 pawn is loose over here, but maybe there's a problem if you take it. The G file opens up against the Black King. And I'm trying to see. Oh, it does take it. That's a brave decision from Danya. And he's in sort of that must-win territory. So why not go for it? And we might see another repetition. Clever stuff yep. here from Magnus. Yep. And Clever stuff way, from Magnus to save the draw. We're now... Sorry, what? I was saying, Magnus oh. is not moving because he has the draw by repetition. This is where gamesmanship comes in. He's only yep. going to make that draw yep. when he's down to like two seconds left. We see Donja... Uh, sorry, we see Magnus chuckling. All the players know that there's that kind of larger meta strategy in these SCC formats, whether it's the Bullet Chess Championship or the Speed Chess Championship, you have to use the clock. But it kind of makes them laugh because that's such an element that has never existed in chess, right, before this format where you're basically playing another game that isn't on the board. And uh, you got to respect it because what he's doing there, Robert, is saying that he respects Danya's ability to make a comeback, right? Mm -hmm. So don't take it the wrong way. He's like, look, I'm milking the format here because I know what Bullet is. I know what Danya is capable of. And I'm going to get every second off the clock that I can. Yeah, it's a smart strategy. We've seen Hikaru do that over the years. And I saw a feature chat saying the Hikaru way. Yeah, the best players who have been around, who have played these formats, they know what to do. And ooh, Magnus Castle's queenside. And yeah, we're going to see it. Alpha Zero style. Open up this H file yep. and go for an attack. Here comes Harry. Simon Williams not with us today, but always here in spirit. Harry for the win. And uh, that's going to be very dangerous for Danya. And Danya has to just drum up some queenside pressure uh, if he can, but yeah. oh no, Danny, the, the pawns are dropping yeah. in front of the white king. This feels too dangerous. This is looking this is looking painful, and a victory here would stretch the lead to four games with probably roughly six and a half minutes left. This is uh, uh, getting hard. It's win or go home, and it needs to start right about now if you're Danya, because Magnus is almost in the territory where he can just start letting the clock tick. Yeah, let's see. With six minutes and 30 seconds remaining, and Donnie needing to score three wins in a row to cut it to one. So there is enough time. Barely. But Donnie needs to win the next three games. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Got to start now. Off to a... Oh. Yeah, he's pre-moving everything. Weird position here. He blundered a yeah. pawn because he's, like, pre-moving nonstop. Oh. Oh. It's yeah. good strategy. You, know, you might lose this game, but a draw to loss is the same for the match. So you need to move instantly, win instantly, and Don is doing all he can. Yeah. Four games is the deficit. You don't want it to become five. So, but you're in that weird spot, Robert, where if you defend this position for a minute for a minute longer and hold a draw, that hurts too because you just lost another minute on the clock and didn't get a victory. So Donya needs to find a way to swindle this night end game and, and get a tricky a tricky win. Uh, I think he, he swindled himself there by uh, pushing yeah, the pawn and leaving a6 behind. Oh, and Magnus, he might not even want to win. Oh. He, he's going for the win, but I thought he just might make yeah. the draw there. Yeah, knight d3, knight c5 was a draw there, but he wants more. A win here essentially puts the match away, right? We never want to call it too soon, but it's getting tough. It's going to be under five minutes with a five-game deficit. Oh, man. 
This was awesome, though. Is it weird that I'm already excited for next year's Bullet Chess Championship? <laughs> and we're right here. <laughs> you, you know that I'm already like. You know why I'm excited for that, Danny? And this is not a shout out in a bad way. It's a shout in a good way. Nihal Sarin, wherever you are right now, I know you're probably going to watch this at some point. Please play. You're invited. I know you're busy, but we would love to see Nihal join the party because we have the best bullet players on the planet here. And I feel like Nihal's really the name that is absent from this field. I completely agree. Um, it'll also help with the uh, the Twitter hate that I received from all of your fans in India, Nihal Sarin, because they thought we didn't invite you. Of course we <laughs> invited you. And so next year you have to play so that, uh, so that people know we didn't mess that up. And, well, this match, it's in the books by right now a five-point margin, and we'll see how it ends. But you can see Magnus bopping his head. He's a different Magnus than we saw earlier in the competition. He is back home. That probably helps. He's on his normal setup. Uh, but he's also just playing a lot better and, I would say, faster in the scrambles. When he was uh, playing from Barcelona, Danny, I don't know if you watched this part, he was, like, shaking his hand after every game. He said his hand was falling yeah. asleep. He didn't have a good setup. So at-home Magnus seems to be increasingly dangerous for the opposition. It sounds silly, but this format as much as anything, brings out the sporting elements of the physical setup players have at home, right? You need a table that supports your wrist. I mean, seriously, right? If you're on an awkward table and your wrist is on the edge, everyone has had that, right? You can't play with a touchpad unless you're Robert Hess. You know, I mean, seriously, you need your setup to do well. And and the physical elements of whatever whatever makes chess an eSport, if you want to call it that, are really highlighted in this event. And uh, and we'll see if that is enough to help Magnus turn around his fortunes and, and maybe, maybe make it all the way to the grand final. And I'm not going to lie. We can already start talking about it. I still see Ali Reza as the favorite in the next round. I love Danya. We're not looking past him, but this one's over. And I think that Perugia Magnus is, uh, we're about to break the internet here. And I think Ali Reza is still the slight favorite against the uh, former world champ. Not sure yeah, if you agree. He did beat Magnus a couple days ago, and he started with a 3-0 lead. And the final margin was a three-point match victory for Ali Reza. So I think that Ali Reza has proven himself to be the best contender to uh, Hikaru Nakamura's title. In fact, Ali Reza won the 2021 edition of this event by beating Hikaru. And yep. wow, as we look at this position, Magnus well on his way to another victory, it would seem, with a huge attack and a huge lead on the clock. Uh, I, I think that you're right, that Ali Reza is the favorite, but Magnus in this form, the way he just demonstrated his bullet skills against Danya here, I think that he's showing that he should not be overlooked himself. I agree. I agree. Well, we're going to see what happens here in probably about 15 minutes in total. Fans, go call everybody. Be like, hey, what are you doing? Why are you working? It's Friday. Come watch the Bullet Chess Championship because the bleep is about to go down. It is Friday. People, you know, man, they might take it easy. And the real question is, are you sitting in the front seat or sitting in the back seat? Right. <laughs> I Either way, I'm having a party. Party and... <laughs> Party yeah. with you, party, and yeah, <laughs> I don't remember exactly the line, but hey, here we go. Oh, what's like oh, 97? Oh, what happened there? Dine, Magnus Dine's is going with the fork. Going with the fork, fork town, e7 town, c5 hangs town. Mm -hmm. Donnie gonna get a win town. Yeah, no, Donnie, he has played a really good match. So even yeah. though the, the margin of victory right now is quite heavily in. Magnus's favor. Part of that was induced by the lack of time, where Dinah started. He, he played not even bullet chess. He played hyper bullet in a one minute game. Uh, but Magnus is the deserved winner. But I think what I'm trying to say is that Danya has proven himself to be a seriously awesome player. And we, we knew that. But it's also good to see yep. him against Hikaru, against Magnus. And they're going to be the only two people who have beaten him. Well, I mean, especially because Johnny is a guy you watch play bullets so much, right? Everyone is a fan of of, of Johnny Nerodisky's stream, and and I think sometimes the haters, if you want to call them that, would be like, ah, but how does Johnny do against the best guys in the world? And we see he holds his own; he beats these guys. And and frankly, I think there were a couple of games earlier in this match that if they had gone the other way, because bullet is such a game of momentum, who knows, right? And again, the final score is what it is for a reason. Magnus Carlson is going to win by probably roughly six six games here even if Donya gets this one. But but I, I think Donya's chess has been better than the final result. So that's my long-winded way of saying I agree with you, Robert, and I love you. I, I, I appreciate both of those things. It's mutual. <laughs> um, <laughs> and we are going to get one more game. So 15 seconds yeah. on the match clock. And Donya's happy, but he, 
as you were saying earlier, he has so much respect for the game of chess, but he has yeah. this loyalty to the game so much that he respects the top players, maybe too much at times. I think that yeah. he respects them, like he doesn't want to flag them. He, he put up his hands, uh, but you, you have to be shameless in the Bullet Chess Championship. There are no friends, as we found out yesterday when he played his good friend, Oleksandr Bortnik. Uh, but Danya, he gets one more game. He relishes the opportunity to play against the best of the best. And right now, all right, in this final one, he is worse. But let's see if he can pull out another victory, one for the road. Yep. Two for the money, one for the road, three to get ready, and four to go. One, <laughs> wait, that, I said it wrong, but you get it. Yeah, um, I know what you're trying to do. And, uh, hey, okay, the bishops are uh, are nasty, but knights are tricky in a time scramble, so if he can keep it close. Magnus, by the way, is just, like, feeling it, right? We saw him DJing the other night or something. Now we see him just bobbing his head, and uh, he's in his zone. I think there's something therapeutic when, when you're in the flow. As you, I think that's what you said earlier. When you're in the flow, listening to music, playing a game you love, I think the players really, really love this format. Yeah. And I think Magnus loves the fact that he's moving on. He gets another chance against Alderiza. And we know that Vengeance, it motivates some people. And Magnus, not really an exception to that. And he says winning once, that's not revenge. And he would like to take down Alderiza. And imagine Danya going for a little cheeky. I love oh, it. Against <laughs> Magnus <me>. smiles. <laughs> Please take that my was rook. so funny. That was so funny. <laughs> oh, you can't take the rook. But you <laughs> Look at that. Look at the fin. <laughs> and Donya laughs. Pro and he Magnus should, he is like, wait, what? to a knight. Does, Ma does Magnus have auto queen on? Take it and get a knight. Take it. Yeah, hold alt and promote to a knight. We're going to definitely make sure Magnus knows that. That was, that was good. By the way, fans, for the inside joke, in case you're not realizing, it's stalemate if you take the rook. That's what's going on here. <laughs> And Magnus, gets it. <laughs> and Magnus plays along. Oh, that was so good, so good. I don't think Magnus knows how to that he is, doesn't have to auto queen if he holds down alt. And Hammer has experienced that his compatriot and so his friend. So Danya, you know, he gets a draw. That was hilarious.